Hey everyone, how's it going? Today we're going to be talking about aircraft modability, or to use a word or phrase that's actually real, the ability to modify an aircraft surface or structure for different roles and purposes, a variable geometry plane. Throughout history, from the beginning days of aviation to the modern day, aircraft designers have been making or attempting to make planes that can change their shape for different purposes. In the more modern era, this is most recognizable in so-called swing-wing aircraft that were much more common into the 1970s. These could alter the angle of their wing sweep from a more traditional perpendicular wing for low-speed flight to a swept wing for high-speed flight. There were also older attempts to make variable wing aircraft by making telescoping wings, although these attempts usually amounted to very little. These attempts at modability almost always focused on the wings and left the rest of the aircraft largely the same. What we're talking about today, though, is easily one of the most moddable or adjustable planes ever made, a plane designed to be infinitely adjustable, to quote them, and an answer to all questions of aerodynamics. This is the Armstrong Whitworth Ape. While the exact reason why it was constructed is unknown to me, it was in response to the British Air Ministry and their specification 4822, that much is certain, but what that specification said, I could not find text of it. Regardless, in all likelihood, that specification was sent out in an effort to determine the aerodynamic efficiency of aircraft with different shapes, sizes, and angles. In essence, they wanted a plane that could change its geometry very quickly, or even in mid-flight, which was definitely a pretty bold ask back in 1926. To this specification, the company Armstrong Whitworth designed what, on the surface, appeared to be your standard biplane, perhaps a bit blockier than you would typically see in 1926, but still your pretty standard-looking biplane nonetheless. The true bizarre nature of the design is best shown in this image, with the tail section pointing downward at about a 25 or 30 degree angle. This adjustable tail was controlled by the pilot, and in mid-flight, he could alter the angle at his will. This was accomplished through wires running back up to the cockpit. Also, the horizontal and vertical tail planes could be swapped out for larger ones, with several different sizes of each available. Now, if this was the only modification possible, that would be one thing, but the wings and the fuselage itself were also capable of being modified. The wings could be modified in three different ways. The stagger of the wings could be altered. The stagger refers to the position of each wing in relation to one another. For the ape, the stagger could be as low as zero degrees, meaning they were even with one another, all the way up to 30 degrees, meaning that the upper wing would be set further forward than the lower wing. Additionally, the gap between the two wings could be altered, ranging from just 4 feet in between them to more than double that at 9.5 feet. Lastly, the dihedral, or the angle of the wings going out from the fuselage, could be altered slightly from 0 degrees up to 7 degrees. For the fuselage, four additional segments could be added as needed or wanted. Two segments, measuring in at 2 feet 9 inches long each, could be added to the rear fuselage behind the pilot, to the front section of the fuselage in front of the pilot and behind the engine, a 21 inch long segment could be added, and another two-foot-long segment could be added as well. Because adding the front segments would make the engine jut out further 
and carried the risk of making the plane front heavy, some small rods were installed under the engine connecting to the wheels, so that if the plane did indeed tip forward, the engine and propeller would be spared. With all of these possible modifications, the dimensions and weight of the ape varied quite a bit. While the wingspan would stay a constant at 40 feet, the length would vary between 28 feet 3 inches and 38 feet 3 inches. The height would also vary, albeit a bit less, between 13 and 15 feet. With the added segments, the weight also varied as well, with the empty weight ranging from 2,020 pounds up to 2,570 pounds. When the first ape model would take to the air on January 5th, 1926, the results were actually pretty horrible. The central issue had rather little to do with the variable nature of the design, but rather the engine they were using. Powered by an Armstrong Sidley Lynx 3, an engine first produced six years earlier in 1920, with just 180 horsepower to its name, the ape simply did not have the performance that could adequately test the different configurations and designs. Forget the most aerodynamically optimal configuration, they really just needed to make sure the ape could properly get off the ground. At sea level, the rate of climb was just 350 feet per minute. At 3,000 feet, that would drop to just 230 feet per minute. It would take the ape 3 minutes to hit 1,000 feet and 11 minutes to reach 3,000 feet. With a top speed of just 90 miles an hour and a cruising speed of just 75, it was clear that an upgraded engine would be needed. For this, they would install a supercharged Lynx engine or possibly even a Bristol Jupiter engine with double the horsepower. But in either situation they tried, it made no discernible difference. The added weight that either engine brought offset the increase in horsepower. Plus, they would add another feature that increased the weight. They gave the ape some small variable angled wings placed just in front of the main wings. These wings would move freely, stopped only by an adjustable hinge. These wings effectively served as primitive versions of modern leading-edge slats that give aircraft better control and lift at lower speeds or at different angles of attack. Of course, considering the poor performance of the plane, how well they could test these proto-slats or any other aspect of the ape, is rather questionable. By 1929, three ape aircraft in total had been produced, with no definitive difference between them. The planes were supposed to be infinitely adjustable, after all, so they wouldn't have to be all that different. However, by May 23, 1929, the ape testing program would be concluded. While not in the final report of the ape's performance, the testing was abruptly concluded after one of the models crash-landed on that day. With the ape performing as poorly as it was, it now being a danger to the test pilots was likely the final straw. While it is not definitively known what happened to the three ape models after May 23rd, in all likelihood they were scrapped, for what little scrap they would provide. In the end, the ape was conceptually bizarre and perhaps a bit too ambitious for its time, making such a variable aircraft likely designed to serve as an aerodynamic testbed with such underpowered engines was kind of putting the cart before the horse. Aviation was still in its relative infancy, and honestly, just getting off the ground at all was a bigger priority. Testing aerodynamic efficiency makes more sense with higher-powered engines, but since biplanes kind of have a low peak performance due to their inherent greater drag, it made little sense to do this kind of test now. 
Still, you don't advance technology if you don't take risks. And the ape was certainly that. So even if it was a flop, I do commend them for making a Transformer-esque plane. At least they tried. Alright, and with that, we're going to go ahead and end for today. So, thank you all for watching. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe. There isn't all that much info about the ape plane out there, just one single book that I found, and even then it was only three pages of that book. Shout out to the Internet Archive website. It's how I could read that section of the book, and also how I watched the movie Condor Man. It was a watch-along kind of thing. You know, just search Condor Man watch-along on YouTube and you'll understand. A very dumb movie, but also very entertaining. Anyway, though, I hope you enjoyed the video, and I hope you learned something. So, see ya.